Great to see you. I'm Michael McCormick. Um, this is my first after the fire, and I don't know uh, what it implies when um, she was saying that people that don't get invited don't belong here, because I got an invite about you know, a week and a half ago. So <clears throat> maybe there was a spot, maybe somebody canceled that was better than me, I'm not sure. Uh, but I've been excited to be part of this team to talk about uh, potential community of practice for long-term recovery. Uh, why am I here? Um, my team at Fairlawn Strategies, we help build communities of practices. I've been a part of uh, building them for almost 20 years now, uh, mainly in the climate adaptation and resiliency space where we're really taking that multi-decadal view on how we reduce risk and do recovery better. Um, and I you know, support and build climate adaptation uh, collaboratives and resilience collaboratives that basically bring people together in a container of trust. And we'll talk a little bit about that today because trust is so important to building a community of practice. And um, part of that trust comes from understanding where people are, where they stand. And I have been so pleased and honored to see uh, the work this week, the past couple of days, talking with all of you and how different of a space this has been than most uh, spaces I've been in in the disaster recovery world. Uh, so I did eight years in the governor's office of planning and research where I was supposed to do long range land, land use planning but ultimately got pulled into many of the fire recovery efforts from 2011 to 2018. Um, I also went to Washington DC, worked in the Obama administration, working on long range adaptation planning, and ultimately we spent half of my time on disasters. And so much of our capacity as communities to think about the future is pulled into the disaster dynamic and really takes away our abilities to think about the future. So part of this intentionality around thinking about long range recovery planning is we don't think about that enough. Sometimes it gets the short shrift, and when the funding and the resources leave after a couple of years, um, what is left, the communities need to really help themselves rebuild, and sometimes they don't know who to reach out to. They don't have those connections that they, they need to build, to, to rebuild efficiently, effectively. They don't have the access to the resources and the funding. And so just kind of echoing many of uh, Jen's introductory uh, comments here. So I'm really excited to be joined by uh, uh, Matt and, um, and, uh, and Heather here today, and we can go to the next one. And we're gonna be using this uh, survey tool, it's the primary tool we're gonna use today because we're, we've got about 22 minutes left. Uh, we are gonna do a little bit of talking at the tables. There's a one sheet of paper on the table that uh, it's a little, there you go, you, you found it. It's right, should be right on the top, so we're gonna use that too. But if you haven't used Mentimeter before, pull out your phone, take a picture of this, push on the, the little uh, icon that pops up, and it'll take you directly to our, uh, our live polling software. Um, and we wanna get a read on where people are. Um, first, we're gonna do a little bit of a fun exercise. We'll, we'll put up this QR code in, a, in another minute, though. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Uh, we wanna do a fun exercise around how we got here. Jennifer Gray Thompson. Let's just talk about the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I mean, I mean uh, Jennifer Gray Thompson. Uh, she didn't see this before today. <laughs> so look, we are all connected to her through this work. And this is one of the interesting challenges of our community of practice for long-term recovery. They are connected to individual people that hold the resources and the connections and the relationships, <laughs> please do. And, uh, and it really is about who do you know, who can you call, how do you access things really, really quickly um, immediately following a disaster, but also um, when you need to, to kind of uh, move forward independently after those significant resources leave post-disaster. So let's go to the next slide. And I um, want to do a quick, uh, quick tabletop exercise. I'm going to leave this up if you haven't looked here. And just take a minute and talk with your friends at your tables, your colleagues at the table, about how you got here. How do you know Jennifer? Because this is a great way to understand why we are connected the way we are in this work that we do. Just take a minute. Everybody's so excited to talk about how they know Jennifer. <laughs> I love it. All right, all right, come on back, everybody. <clears throat> if you can hear me, raise your hand. If you can hear me, raise your hand. Who, who else has taught elementary school? <laughs> right, it works. All right, so everybody should have this up on their screen. They should have the, the software pulling uh, uh, up and connected on their devices. If you don't, raise your hand. Does anybody need some help with this? 
And it's okay to acknowledge you need help with it too. All right, so I think we got a few last snaps. All right, let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna talk about, um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how many after the fires you've attended, in which you probably got this information from talking with each other too. Little, uh, little test poll here. I was the first response. I wanted to make sure it worked. <laughs> all right, look at all the first, first folks. I love it. This is great. We've got some long timers here. Five plus, is that a possibility? There were, there were pre after the fire convenings. They, those count too, if you were part of some of those pre convenings that weren't um, titled as such. We got one person. Hopefully at least Jennifer voted for that one. <laughs> All right, well this gives us a good feel, right? There's a good chunk of people that are here the first time, and that's great. Right, it's activating uh, new relationships. Unfortunately, it may be driven because of uh, our disaster dynamic, um, particularly our friends from Hawaii are here, um, maybe their first time as well, um, but I'm certainly in that category. All right, let's go to the next one. And what sector you, are you in? And this is a, a free response, so you'll have three different options. You can write a one-word answer, and um, we're gonna build a word cloud about it. And this will help Jennifer also understand a little bit of who the heck is here. Uh, no, this is a, it's a great way to just kind of get a feel for who's here um, and uh, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, how you're connected to the space this week. Emergency management, disaster recovery, government, the big G. Entrepreneurship, okay. The entrepreneurial spirit in a post-disaster environment is great. I know, this is so cool. I, lo I love word clouds. Yeah. So, and this is all about self-labeling, right? Like, how do you see yourself in the space? Um, so we have a lot of uh, government, resilience, nonprofit, recovery folks, uh, certainly a number of folks in finance and housing. Um, Capacity building, disaster recovery, consulting. This is, yeah, really, really helpful. How y'all feeling about this? Are you surprised? Does this make sense? Nod if it makes sense. Okay, that's good. That's great. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move forward um, to our next slide. And um, next thing we're gonna talk about is how far you are in your recovery journey. Um, I don't think I clicked the button that says you can click multiple buttons because that's an unfortunate reality in long-term recoveries. Oftentimes you're recovering from multiple events at the same time within, within a decade. Um, so some not applicable, so folks that are, maybe one or two people that are not applicables, um, is it because you're working to support those activities and you're not directly affected? Or raise your hand and just kind of, yeah, back here. Yeah, so you're supporting, but you're not directly affected, okay. Four plus years. Yeah, when we start thinking about anything beyond two or three years, that is long-term recovery. Um, two years is pretty much when things start uh, closing down, except in some of the most extreme uh, events and look at that and look how many of us are involved in long-term recovery good thank you all right let's go to the next slide so I'm gonna introduce um, or Matt is gonna introduce himself very briefly and uh, introduce uh, Commissioner Buck as well to, to make a few comments about why Lane County is so interested in this discussion I think it's a great story to ground us in in why this discussion is happening today Matt, take Thanks, it away. Thanks, Michael. Um, I'll try and be very quick. I just want to start by thanking Jennifer for the work that she does to support us all. Thank you. Um, and for making space for this conversation here. Um, I also want to acknowledge the Maui contingent and um, just so inspired by the wholeness with which you all approach recovery. It's um, really moving to me. I also have a sense for all the things that you had to leave and that are going on right now while you're here. And um, taking that break is really hard. I found it to be really hard. So um, appreciate 
the, the sacrifice you're making there. Um, I want to very briefly um, touch on response versus recovery. Um, we have a bunch of first responders here who are on a scene and they're on the scene until the scene is stabilized and everybody's safe. And it's really after that that we start into recovery, right? Once the scene is stabilized and we start to clean things up, and then there comes a point where we start rebuilding things. And at that point, first responders have gone home largely, right? Because they have to be prepared for the next thing that's coming. And that's when the long-term recovery begins. And um, it, from my perspective, it's long-term recovery is a lot more like uh, development, like community development on steroids than it is emergency management. I work very closely with our emergency manager in Lane County. Um, and I didn't introduce myself, did I? I'm sorry, I work in Lane County, which is Oregon, uh, north of here, about eight hours by car. Lane County contains the town of Eugene, and I'm working to support wildfire recovery up the Mackenzie River. I've been doing that job for about three and a half years now. My apologies. Um, and so, so I was in this position working on recovery as the recovery manager for Lane County, and I started to reach out for examples to try and see what have other people done. And again, after the fire being a tremendous resource as a, as a point of contact. Um, but when we start needing other templates of like uh, assessments, housing assessments, um, behavioral health assessments, there's a whole host of things that as a, a recovery manager, a person steps into. And certainly these things haven't been done before, but there was no centralized place where all those, where there were good examples that lived. I could spend a bunch of time on the internet scouring and finding some examples, but I didn't know whether they were good examples or really bad examples. And in the middle of recovery at the end of year one, the last thing you wanna do is be scouring the internet because there's so much stuff to do, so much work to be done. Um, so it was really that space that, um, drove me into a conversation with Jennifer and Michael about um, can we fill that space? What can we do so that we can better support each other? Um, and I just wanna call out, there are definitely resources. There are peer network resources for emergency managers. They're very robust. There's a, a tremendous resource for first responders to share best practices and, and get good at what they're doing, but it, it, that doesn't exist on the recovery front. FEMA, as many of you may know, has written a book on recovery, but as many of you also know, they're typically gone by about month 18, right? Is this your experience as well? Um, by month 18, the last person from FEMA had left our stage. Um, and so you know, their recovery plan, I think, is based on short-term recovery, not the long-term recovery that we're talking about today. Um, and, and that's really all I wanted to do, is, is just share my experience as somebody working in a small, county government, trying to figure out how to do this job. I had never done recovery before. And certainly we have examples from Florida and Texas, right? Um, who can inform this work, but we're, we're not as methodical about it as we could be. And I feel like um, as somebody who has wandered through that space before, um, there's a lot of opportunity for us to get better at supporting each other so that we can all do this job better. Thanks, Michael. All right, and then I'll just very quickly introduce uh, Commissioner Heather Buck, who is uh, one of five commissioners for Lane County. She represents the territory that was affected by the Holiday Farm Fire and has been an immense champion for the people that she represents. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Matt. Um, good morning, friends. I feel like I've found my element here uh, in an unfortunate series of events. Um, when the Labor Day fires of 2020 hit Oregon. I was just in my second year as a county commissioner. They call them supervisors here in California, and I know they call them yet another name in uh, Hawaii. Uh, I happened to have been chair of our board that year, uh, already deep into COVID uh, response, and worked with uh, when the fires hit later in, in September, uh, worked with two emergency management agencies simultaneously and incident command teams simultaneously trying to get as much information out to the public as humanly possible. And emergency management wasn't my background. Um, my personal professional background was housing and affordable homes for the most vulnerable in our community and working with our largest social service agency. 
in the area. So um, I was really new to what it meant to be part of the emergency management team and first responder team in our community. Um, our fire was 170,000 acres. And at the time, I knew that if it had been the only fire, it would have been national news, except for the fact that all of Oregon had these fires. And in, in fact, all of the West Coast had that fire um, activity that year at, this, uh, at the same time. So uh, there were competing issues at play. And what I would have given for a peer who had been through uh, a fire affected community once before to be able to be a mentor or a sponsor at the time, um, it, it, it would have changed the game. And instead, there were several of us commissioners um, that were all experiencing the same thing for the first time and trying to work through uh, what it meant to be uh, responding to a fire, let alone long-term recovery and what that expectation really went would be. In Oregon, we excel at response, initial attack. Um, we're very, very good with that, but we know nothing about recovery until now. And we're kind of, again, putting uh, the plane together while we're flying. Uh, I now understand, after four years of working in recovery, there is a, a somewhat very predictable series of events that, as an elected and as staff, that you will be hit with. Um, I happened to be vacationing in Oahu when the Maui fires hit, and I instantly knew exactly what uh, would probably come their way um, in the next one month, three months, six months, and year after. And it saddened me. Um, it, and I would not have otherwise known that there was association like this except for um, you know, through fire recovery and through my staff and learning about um, after the fire a couple months ago. That shouldn't uh, and doesn't need to be our future we can be here for other communities in the future. I would have loved to have been given a heads up about what did it mean to um, deal with all the donations and all that that entails, right? That is a whole system in and sub of itself. What it meant to um, deal with FEMA's direct housing mission, that was a whole nother mess that we had to deal with. Um, what it meant to our landfill space and hazmat cleanup in Oregon, our Department of Transportation was tasked with cleaning up these properties and it took a course of year and, and our Department of Transportation never ever done anything like that before. So of course there were problems with that as well. And now long-term housing and what it means to rebuild in a state where land use codes are extremely tight. Um, and people's homes that they had before would never qualify for being built in today, um, let alone the cost of trying to rebuild them. My community was um, all unincorporated. So because there was no city, I was effectively their mayor, city council, everything all wrapped into one. And some help and resources would have um, really changed the game. And unfortunately, we know that that was a combination of emergencies at the same time. And when we think of perhaps a wildfire, sometimes we think it, it one fire here, and then a couple months, another one, and another one around the world. But in fact, there are simultaneous uh, disasters occurring at the same time everywhere. Um, and you never know what's going to hit you at that time, uh, and you have to be prepared for it all. I didn't know that this is what I was signing up to when I ran for office, but when you do, I now have learned when you sign up for it, you sign up for anything, anything and everything that could come um, 
you have to be ready for. And so that's part of my story about coming here and meeting many of you today. Um, would love to remain connected, but if we could formalize it in a way where you knew for sure this person had that experience and I could reach out or another staff member in another location could reach out and be a mentor, uh, I think we could speed up recovery in a big way. Uh, recovery it takes a long time. It takes generations to actually build a community. And yet, many of the expectations are we need to rebuild that community like that in order for people to feel healed and back to their normal life. And that is not a natural way of rebuilding or building a community. And so there's a, a dynamic there that we need to um, really maintain with a community and their relationship and talking with them about managing expectations. That's, I got to be one of the hardest uh, lessons I've learned as commissioner in the aftermath of the wildfire. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Great, we just have a couple of minutes left, and I think um, one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about, what makes a production network possible? This is super wonky, so I'm not gonna go deep on this, but there are some core things we need to do as a community of practice to create some stability to allow efficiency to occur. One of them we talked about a little bit earlier was connectivity, and so much of that happens in venues like this and dynamics like this. Um, and certainly, uh, there's a number of individuals in the space that are bringing folks together through that connectivity. Uh, alignment as well, you can be connected and misaligned and that can be kind of challenging to work through uh, issues together. Um, so working, uh, once you're connected and trusting each other, working through alignment and identifying opportunities to really um, empower each other to do better. And then the last stage of that is really production. I, and this was produced for the American Society of Adaptation Professionals. My colleague Beth Gibbons couldn't be here today, but. One of the things she's done for the adaptation, climate adaptation community of practice is to really uh, try to create an understanding of what makes a, a very efficient uh, community of practice uh, so folks can move forward with really hard work and, um, and build trust and build connections along the way. Because in the end, we're all humans in the space, right? We're all people. We need love, we need care, and uh, it's been great to see that in this, in this event and love to build that into the work that happens in the future. So I'm not gonna stick on this, but this will be, um, some of the things that we'll talk about uh, for those of you that are interested in continuing this conversation. So if we go to the next slide. Um, one of the things, uh, we do have the sheet of paper on the table. We're out of time to actually uh, do our breakout groups because um, there's, there's folks that need to hop on a bus here in a, in a little bit. But um, one of the things we really wanted to dig into is how, does this, how could this uh, community of practice uh, serve all of you? Do you see value in it? Do you see like a connection to that need? Um, and uh, particularly, uh, are there those of you that would like to engage with us in the future? There's been a small group working to kind of think through this. We have a position paper that we're building out and hopefully would like to share that with additional funders. We have shared uh, this concept with a number of funders at the national level and there is interest in supporting something like this. Um, so if we can get something moving, uh, it really creates a much more stable foundation to continue these conversations so that individual champions don't have to hold this as a single person. Uh, it can be built into an ongoing community of practice. So if you, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, if you wanna contact me, I'm gonna cue those, uh, all those folks up and we're gonna talk about it as a small group. We'd love to have a, a follow-up conversation to this in a few weeks. We'll share the paper with folks that are interested in engaging with us further, editing that, modifying that, and thinking about how we can move forward on this concept. Uh, obviously, if, if use this email as well to, to share concerns or things where you're like, hey, this is already happening somewhere else, we really want to know that because we do not want to be recreating this wheel. Uh, we would do want to do something that's really helpful to the folks out there. And, and I think there's the, you know, the, the proverb of, uh, in order to take care of others, you must take care of yourself. And there is great community um, in uh, supporting uh, individual communities that are, that are going through disasters. 
and there isn't the community for the community of practitioners that are supporting those communities. All right, so it is a, a multi-layered cake of community, but really it is about making it easier um, and faster, more efficient, and a more trust-based uh, uh, support uh, process for long-term disaster recovery. Super glad you're all here. Um, and if you do, uh, you know, feels free time today and you'd like to go through these sheets that are on the paper, on the table, please do. Um, and happy to collect those later. Again, email me with any uh, questions, thoughts, concerns, or excitement about this, and uh, we'll be following up with those that, that connect with us. Jen, any uh, last comments on that? And anybody have any questions or something you would like to see in the sort of mutual aid? Um, obviously, firefighters and police do it great, so they already know, but anybody else have any questions or comments? Comments are good. Oh, Jim Alvey. Please say your name and your organization. Uh, I am in the community of long-term recovery groups. Now, I'm in uh, Good360, um, and I heard the need for donations management expressed, and I just wish that we had been connected then. Um, but we will be connected through this. We're definitely going to participate. Also, a good lesson for me is to note that I went into Marion County in 2021. Sorry, missed Lane County, same fires. And so I'm always like learning and listening. And so my apologies to you because um, I focused on the neighboring county, but I really needed to look at it more holistically from all of the counties because then we would have already been best friends. So, okay, any other questions or comments? About and, and go ahead. You're just one person. You know I how know. is it that you know just you have done such an enormous amount of work here, and uh, with the amount of fires that are going on, let alone other disasters that occur, you know this this can't be a movement um, unless we create space for a larger group of people to be able to collectively go in and help. I totally agree, and I know this is true because when I look this time of year, especially at the fires, and I start counting structures, and then I started thinking about workflow, and then I started thinking about my travel schedule, and then, so all of that, I don't want any of that to be in the consideration. I want it to just be like, go. Who needs to go? Let's send those people. Uh, supervisor, hold on. Um, my name is Jessica Bysk, I'm in Lake County. So we met many years ago before after the fire when it was rebuilt North Bay, but actually before the 2017 fires in 2015, when kind of all of this started, this was the very beginning for most of us. And then Sunday, we had our most recent fire and lost 30 more structures. So I do wanna say that collectively, we've learned a tremendous amount and none of us are in the same place that we were in the beginning. And there's so much progress for us to continue to make, so definitely count me in. And him. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So true. Be much more um, efficient and effective. And do we have any other counselors or supervisors? I, I mean, I see you, but I just was trying not to put you on the spot, Tamara. Okay, hold on one moment. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tamara Palti, and I'm the council member from West Maui. Um, I guess my question would be like in the previous mutual aid section, you said about doing the paperwork on the back end and if there could be like pre-position contracts or paperwork on the front end about how the compensation works and things like that. Um, because you kind of want to know going in instead of like get a bill at the back end or something like that. Oh. Oh, oh, to be clear, this isn't something that would end up charging communities. I don't believe in that. That's not going to happen. I will not participate in that model, quite frankly. Like, it should come from larger associations, the private sector, all of the contractors that bid on this work, but never get to decide. They don't get, they don't get a say, and they don't get to be in the room. 
So I'm very clear about that. And you know what? Contractors don't mind because they know what it is that we do. I, I've been doing scope of work for Fannie Mae for six, oh, almost seven years. Not one time have they ever interfered with my mission or how I do it. They just ask for my findings. And so the way that we would set it up is so that it would be funded so we could immediately deploy, say, you to, let's just call it, um, I don't know, another island community, something like that, and that you would know that not only would there not be a bill for that community later, but that you also would not be uh, worried about your own financial stability in order to do it. Because a lot of our fire survivors who do stand up to do the most work they're not the wealthiest people. I'm not. I just live in a normal little home. I drive a truck. You know, I got a mortgage. I got student loans. You know, all of those things are normal and expected. It's a good question. Thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, supervisor elect. Good morning. Um, I think highlighting not just the professional uh, society and support, but also your elected officials. Uh, when Maui had their fires, I reached out to um, their member of Congress to make sure that her staff knew the type of casework that was going to come in to their office, um, be it uh, Department of State, USCIS, um, the post office, making sure that they were prepared for the type of work that was going to be coming, and then how we handled being in community at the evacuation centers, connecting with stakeholders to see what the need is in the community. So. Everybody has a different experience at the government level, so making sure that you're sharing that as well. Which also means we can list the states that have done it. What are the components? Like an island component is a different component. And, and that's why before we go, we actually pull all the demographics. We want to know. We learn as much as we can before. Um, it's never enough, but we do. But that way we can deploy it. Um, uh, Paul Lowenthal, who's been quiet, but that's fine. Um, he's probably been to m most mega fires and how he gets caught. I mean, so much of this is like, oh, I know you, you know me, now we've done this, and I'm going to give you that name. How I finally, how I broke through into the Maui fires was because Diane, uh, Senator Feinstein was still alive, and I had been working with her staff for years, and so she, um, Hirono's staff called her. And they said, who do we talk to? And on August 10th, Senator Hirono's senior staff um, asked me to get on a Zoom, and I did. And then that way, at least, it's also vetted. It's got to be vetted. There's Because, and you know, I mean, on August 9th, you know that uh, contractors and developers, not all, con I'm, not, I'm not dissing on contractors, we're swimming across the ocean for sure, trying to get there to do it. Um, we need something that also helps you vet who's going to show up immediately. So it has to be a consistent, you can't just show up once. You've, I've been to Maui five times already. Paul's been six times. He just got back last week. And, and you have to be able to listen and then figure, and then not only what's around the corner, but the sensitivity of what happens first means that fire brain, as we call it, the first year, that if we have to say, you know, if, we have to, if you ask five times, we don't care. You can ask seven times. You don't have to remember everything from that one meeting that we had when there were other things going on. And we are also people who understand very clearly that you... It, Often, like Supervisor Goss is here from Plumas County, and I met him um, when the fire was still raging, Dixie Fire, 105 days. That was ridiculous, um, but it was a monster. And four times it ran at Taylorsville, where his home is, but he lost his pharmacy. Um, it also had to be that the way that I approached, that I went into and to met him for the first day had to work for him. And that, that's on me to figure that out. And I lost my train of thought around that. But um, it's got to be multifaceted, trauma-informed, really important and, and, very, and full of grace at every single step. And that's why this whole um, summit is... is um, sort of put together with the same heart that, it, that you're witnessing over the last three days, including today. This is what, how we do it. This is how I believe in it. I'm not right about everything. Sorry, right about this, though. 
do you know about how to approach it? So, and Zeke's going to say something, and then I think we're probably um, just about ready to go to the next one. Go ahead. Look at you, the message is a shirt. Aloha, uh, Mike My name is Zeke Kalua, Executive Assistant Office of the Mayor County of Maui. Um, you know, Oregon, we're kind of connected already because he sent us a gift early on. His name is Jeff Gilbert. He's a regional emergency coordinator for the Office of Resilience and Emergency Management. He actually assisted the state uh, Department of Human Services to write a federal grant that only the state could qualify, which provided funding for tents and resources that came directly from Oregon State that were then able to be set up and operated by a nonprofit in Kahului, Maui to help immediately shelter some of the unsheltered in our community. So I just wanted to give Jeff a shout out and just say that resources like that would have been something we may have found out at some point in the process, but it was very fast that assistance like that was able to go and help us provide one more resource that may have taken us a lot longer to, to source out. So as far as establishing a connection, in theory, we're already connected to you folks. So thank you so much. And I would love to share that there are, there are eight people that have already emailed to be in this uh, follow-up discussion. So thank you all so much for your commitment and uh, looking forward to what we'll follow up in the next couple of weeks on next steps.